What we see here is an economy with an output gap. As you can see, the short run equilibrium output is below our full employment output. This is sometimes referred to as a recessionary output gap. And in other videos, we talk about how there could be a self-adjustment mechanism in the long run. That because we are below full employment, folks when, who maybe especially folks who want to get a job might say, hey, I'm willing to work for less and less. And maybe our short run aggregate supply curve shifts down over time and we get to a state something like this. And in that case, so this would be our short run aggregate supply curve too. And in that case, all of a sudden we would be at a long run equilibrium where our where our equilibrium output is equal to our full employment output. But let's say that that does not happen. Let's say we are in a world where for some reason we stay sticky with this negative output gap. And you are the government and you want to do something about it. You want to get back to full employment output. Well, there's a couple of levers. You have fiscal policy, fiscal policy, which is all about changing how much you spend. So this would be government spending. Let me write, make it clear, this is government, government spending, or changing the amount of taxation. So the theory is if the government spends more, that would, be, that would increase total output. And the other theory is if the government taxes less, there's more money out in the economy and that could also increase total output. And there's also monetary policy, which we're not going to go into detail in this video, but monetary policy is messing with the mo money supply. If maybe if there's more money out there, lower interest rates, it might increase output, and then the opposite could be true the other way. But we are going to, so let me just write this. This is the money supply. Money supply slash interest rates. Interest rates. And this would be the business of a central bank. But we are going to focus on fiscal policy. So as a government, what we want to see happen is this aggregate demand curve shift to the right. So we want it to get to a place like this. We want our aggregate demand curve to shift to the right, just like this. So this would be aggregate demand two. And how do we do that? How do we get this shift right over here so that we get to our full employment output? Well, there's two levers that we can think about, as we just said, government spending and taxation. Now, a big misconception is a lot of folks say, well, if I increase spending by $100 billion, that's the equivalent of reducing taxes by $100 billion because there would be $100 billion more dollars out there in the economy to increase output. But you have to be very careful. Remember what we learned about multipliers. And remember, these are all very simple models. But our regular multiplier, let me write it over here, our regular multiplier, our regular multiplier is 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. While our tax multiplier, tax multiplier, is equal to, so if you have a, an increase in taxes, that would be the negative of the marginal propensity to consume over one minus the marginal propensity to consume. The negative would be if you increase taxes, that is going to have a negative total effect on spending. And the reason why you have this marginal propensity to consume in the numerator is, if I were to have my taxes reduced by say $100, depending on my marginal propensity to consume, if my marginal propensity to consume is less than one, which it typically is, I'm not gonna spend all that $100. I am going to spend some fraction of it, really the marginal propensity to consume times $100. While if the government just goes out there and spends $100, well, that $100 got spent. And to see the impact, the difference in impact, let's go through a little bit, let's do an example. Let's say a situation where the government, the government just spends $100 billion. So the government wants to spend $100 billion. What is going to be the impact, and let's say we're in a world where our marginal propensity to consume is equal to 0.8. What is going to be the effect on the economy in this situation right over here? Well, in this situation, you're going to have $100 billion of spending times, you're going to multiply it times the multiplier, 1 over 1 minus our marginal propensity to consume, 0 0.8. And so this is going to be equal to $100 billion, $100 billion divided by 0 0.2. Well, 0 0.2 is 1 fifth, so this is going to be the same thing as dividing by 1 fifth or multiplying by 5. So you're going to have an increase in output based on this very simple model of 500 
billion dollars. So our multiplier here was five. But let's say we go the other way. Let's say instead the government decides to decrease taxes by $100 billion. So decrease, decrease taxes by $100 billion. And we're going to assume the exact same marginal propensity to consume. Well, in that situation, what's our tax multiplier? And we're decreasing taxes, so that'll offset this negative. So the increase in the economy is going to be our $100 billion times our marginal propensity to consume, 0.8, divided by one minus the marginal propensity to consume. Well, this part right over here was exactly the same as what we had over there. So that's going to be equal to $500 billion, this part, times 0.8. And so what is that going to be? Well, that's just going, that is going to be equal to 400, 400 billion dollars. And once again, intuitively, where did this come from? Well, if the government spends that hundred billion dollars, that hundred billion dollars gets spent. And then you have the marginal propensity to consume. The person or the people who get it would then spend 80 billion of that. And then the people who get that would spend 64 billion, on and on and on. So it eventually ends up being 500 billion. But the, with the decrease in taxes of 100 billion, that first 100 billion doesn't necessarily get spent. If I get my taxes reduced, let's say they're all on me, by 100 billion, I might save some of it based on this marginal propensity to consume. I might save 20 billion of it and spend the other 80 billion. And so that's why, based on this simplified model, you might have a lower total impact right over here. So that's a very important takeaway. Fiscal policy, government spending, or taxation, but based on these models, you would use a different multiplier. And so they are not going to be necessarily equivalent.